Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be discussing possibly the worst occupation of the Second World War, service aboard the Japanese Midget Submarine, formerly designated the Ko Hiyoteki class. A brief history of the sub will be provided, and why being assigned to this steel trap promised certain death. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. In anticipation of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Imperial Japanese Navy had readied an elusive and pioneering machine, one that had been kept in the dark, away from prying eyes. This contraption was the Japanese Midget Submarine, information known only by a select few. The Japanese Imperial Navy had intentionally mislabeled the project as a target or techie to mislead and divert any unwanted attention. These early subs were also described as tubes, among other vague names, to maintain secrecy. Officially designated the Type A Kohyoteki Kogata class submarine, these undersized instruments were never individually identified, but rather called by the whole number of their mother submarine. The Kohyoteki would be manufactured in three classes, A, B, and C, the C class sub being the last variant manufactured. Two pre-production prototypes were constructed and are distinctive for lacking conning towers. This feature was soon incorporated as the conning tower provided necessary stability. Crew layout and conditions inside the Japanese midget submarine were deplorable, and I will attempt to paint an accurate picture. Manned by a group of two, the environment within the control room can be summed up as hellish. An officer would stand rigid, directing the vessel from the cramped conning tower more akin to a tube. A periscope is only window to the surface. The officer would also reference an onboard gyro compass to keep direction, but mainly relied on sight alone. The second crew member, frequently a man of lesser rank, would maintain the trim and ballast tanks of the sub while simultaneously controlling the rudder. Taking orders, the second in command sat directly below the officer with seldom room to breathe. The two men confined to a space no bigger than 5 feet 6 inches across and 8 feet tall. Packed into their stations, the control room equipment crowded around them on all sides, constricting movement to a bare minimum. To amplify the claustrophobic atmosphere within the midget submarine, ventilation was extremely poor. Air quickly turned stale with the rank odors of your crewmate in the sweltering heat of the South Pacific. The humidity of the compartment would regularly become unbearable, reaching temperatures upwards of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Profusely sweating, as you rebreathe noxious second-hand fumes, the odds have only begun to stack against you. On top of all other difficulties, the two-man crew worked blind, or close to it, in darkness. Dull ambient equipment lighting was the only viable source of illumination aboard the Kohyoteki class submarine in control of the sub, but at the mercy of the sea, as one rogue wave could inflict great trauma upon its occupants, violently smashing the crew into the onboard systems. These vessels were ingenious, but far from infallible, with the relatively young technology often suffering failures. Nothing demonstrates this point clearer than the December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. By the cover of darkness, a flotilla of full-size Type C-1 Japanese submarines approached the outskirts of Oahu. Any ship attempting to escape the harbor would be met with a wall of torpedoes. Aboard the forward decks of these Type C-1 motherships sat the Kohyoteki class sub, five in total. The objective was to infiltrate the harbor, remaining below the surface in wait. As the air raid commenced, the midget submarines would rise from the waves and release their two available torpedoes, cloaked by the chaos above. War is an imperfect art, and things rarely go to plan. Of the five Kohyoteki class subs, one successfully entered Pearl Harbor, but was immediately sunk upon surfacing by the USS Monaghan. The second submarine washed ashore the following morning on December 8th after enduring multiple direct hits from a deck gun of the USS Helm. Commander Kazuo Sakamaki, its sole survivor. Kazuo's companion, Warrant Officer Kiyoshi Inagaki, was not so fortunate and drowned while swimming to shore. 
His vessel, an A-type, hole number HA-19, was captured, studied, and later used to promote the sale of war bonds. The third midget sub was detected five miles off the coast of Oahu, roughly one hour before the air raid, being promptly sunk by the USS Ward. The Kohioteki Kogara class submarine, disabled by the destroyer Ward, was located August of 2002 in deep water. Today, it rests as a Pearl Harbor National Historic Landmark. It would not be until 1951 when the fourth of five midget subs would be discovered. Lying in shallow water, towards the mouth of the harbor, the vessel exhibited peculiar damage. The fourth submarine showed signs of an internal explosion. Researchers suggest that the two-man Japanese crew had become trapped following a possible electric failure. Sitting on the seafloor and unwilling to slowly suffocate, the pair likely set off an explosive charge to free themselves. This attempt failed, sealing their fate. The fifth and final Kohyoteki class midget submarine, utilized during the attack on Pearl Harbor, was uncovered in 1960 under similar circumstances. Again, in shallow waters, fully intact, both torpedoes still armed at its bow. As with the fourth sub, the fifth could have experienced a myriad of complications, ranging from issues managing the ballast tanks to loss of direction, or the leading culprit, an electrical malfunction. The crew of the fifth A-class sub made no such effort to escape as the previous men had and slowly died of asphyxia, the vessel becoming their tomb on the ocean floor. Lack of training could have also contributed to combat ineffectiveness and subsequent death. The Japanese Kohioteki class submarine was remarkably tricky to control. Compounded with the horrendous crew conditions, its faults were only exacerbated. The midget sub could in theory dive to a depth of 330 feet, but generally dwelled near the surface. Throughout the war, especially at daytime, a surfaced Kohioteki submarine was truly a floating target for Allied ships and aircraft alike. Survivability was low, and morale was almost certainly lower. That is why service aboard the Kohioteki class sub was the worst occupation of World War II. I hope you've enjoyed this brief subjective video on the Japanese midget submarine. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I'm no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.